Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, today is another one of our darker videos and we are going to be talking about plane crashes. Now because of my book tour, I've been on a lot of planes lately and flying is probably one of my biggest fears. I mean, can you blame me? The thought of being cramped into this fucking metal object in the sky hurling through the clouds. At any moment, it could just explode and come crashing to the ground. And what are the chances of surviving that? Probably zero. Well, that led me down a really dark hole on the internet where I started looking up facts about plane crashes, videos of planes crashing. I even watched an entire documentary called How to Survive a Plane Crash, which by the way, it was great. It's on YouTube. This is not sponsored. It's really fucking cool. I'll put the link down in the description if you want to check it out. And I learned a lot of stuff. So today I'm going to break down what I learned about plane crashes. First, we're going to be talking about the emergency door. So if you've ever been on a plane and you've been looking around, you've probably noticed that on each side there are two emergency doors. And what I always noticed was, wow, those look kind of easy to open. It's just one latch. Like what would happen if somebody just decided to open it? Well, a few things would happen and none of them good. Now, if somebody were to open up that door during the flight, they would be sucked out of the plane. And pretty much everyone's sitting in that area. And if you're not sucked out of the plane, you're probably not going to survive because the air that would fill the plane would be freezing cold because of the altitude. You would practically turn to ice and then the hole where the door was would start to get bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually the entire plane would just whoosh break apart. So if you're ever on a plane and you're thinking about trying to unlatch that emergency door, fucking don't. The second thing I learned is that planes usually don't crash while they're like mid-flight. If a plane's gonna crash, it's usually gonna happen the first three minutes during the takeoff or the last eight minutes before it lands. Supposedly 80% of plane crashes happen during those 11 minutes. And some of the deadliest plane crashes in history have happened on takeoff. Here's a video clip I found of a plane crashing before it even really took off. Check it out. Now this next thing I heard honestly creeped me the fuck out. I could not stop visualizing it, so of course I'll share it with you guys. If a plane crashes and the impact is hard enough, your body, because it's made up of 70% water, will explode. Now I don't even know what that means or how to visualize that other than just a water balloon exploding. I mean, I've never seen an actual real video clip of somebody exploding. I've only seen it in the movies, but it's still fucking terrifying. Now, have you ever noticed that when you're taking off or you're landing, they turn all the lights in the plane off and usually the windows are unrolled so you can see outside? Well, the reason they do that isn't so that you'll fall asleep or so that you'll feel comfortable. No, no, no. The reason they do that is because they want your eyes to adjust to the natural lighting outside. That way, if the plane crashes while it's taking off or landing, your eyes will already be adjusted to the natural lighting outside so that when you get to the exit door, it doesn't like blind you. Oh, and those lights that go all the way across the floor are not to help you find the bathroom or to help you find your seat. It's because when the plane crashes, it fills completely with smoke and those lights are the only thing you'll be able to see. And that's how you're gonna guide your way to the exit door. But that leads us to the next thing I learned, which is about fire and smoke, and it is fucked up. Now surprisingly, a lot of people survive the actual crash of the plane, but what they usually don't survive is the fire that happens when the plane is on the ground. So when the plane crashes, you have 90 seconds to get the fuck out or you are dead. In 90 seconds, the entire plane will fill with black, thick smoke, and breathing that in for even just a few minutes will kill you. There's been stories of planes crashing where everybody survived the crash, and then only like 20 people got out of the plane from the smoke. And that's because once they open those emergency doors, people just stampede, and they crush each other, and they just like completely turn it into chaos. And because of that, the 90 seconds goes real fast, and then... Everybody's dead. This next thing I learned scared the shit out of me, and it's about the pilots. So there was a survey done, and around 50% of pilots admitted to falling asleep while they were flying the plane. But we shouldn't be worried, right? Because there's always two pilots flying the plane. Well, a third of those pilots that were surveyed admitted that when they woke up from their sleep, they looked over, and the other pilot was asleep too. Now, I know planes can kind of fly themselves once you're up in the air, so it's not something to be super scared of, but I don't know, call me crazy. It kind of freaks me out to think about a pilot being asleep <laughs> when you're in the plane. Holy fuck. Now I learned another fact about life jackets. We talked about this before in a conspiracy theory video where basically the whole point of a life jacket isn't so that you'll be floating in water so you can swim home, isn't so that you'll be floating in the water so you can wait for the rescue boat. No, no, no. Usually the water's so cold that you freeze to death anyways. The point of the life jacket is so that your body is floating on the surface of the water so that when they come to find your dead body, they can get it easily. Well, I learned another thing about life jackets. Supposedly they're bright yellow for the same reason. Because if there's a crash and there's a bunch of 
bodies in the water or bodies in trees and just bodies everywhere. If your dead body has that bright yellow life jacket on, they can easily see you. Now this next thing I learned isn't really about flying in like a normal plane, it's more about the Air Force. But basically when you're in the Air Force, they take footprints of you. And supposedly the reason for that is because when one of those small Air Force planes crashes, the only thing left of the soldier is the foot in his boot. Ugh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh fuck. That one really gives me chills. I also learned a few things about seatbelts. Now, one of them is exciting. Supposedly, if you have one of those thick seatbelts, that means there's an airbag inside of it, which means it will actually explode on impact and hopefully protect you. And that's great. That'll keep you from smashing your head against the seat in front of you. That'll keep you from like flailing your limbs around. So if you're on a plane and you notice that your seatbelt is really thick and extra big, you should be very grateful. But then you have the other seatbelts, which are pretty standard and normal, and they only go across your waist. Well, one thing that's scary about that is that in some plane crashes, it has been shown that some people get chopped in half by their seatbelt. If the impact is strong enough, the person could fly forward and disconnect from their own body. But if the impact is strong enough anyways, everybody's gonna die. So whether you have a seatbelt on or not, you're still gonna be fucking dead. But just the thought of, oh, that is just terrifying. Okay, so on a plus side, now we are going to talk about ways that you can survive a plane crash. Now I watched that documentary. I looked up a lot of different lists and facts and a lot of different videos, and I compiled together some of the tips that I think are the most useful. Number one, book a seat that is within five rows of the exit door. That way you'll be able to get out hopefully within that first 90 seconds. If you're sitting in the very back of the plane or even in first class at the very front, chances are you're not going to make it. Number two, as you're entering the plane, make sure to touch each seat that you walk past and count how many seats you are from the exit. That way, if the plane is filled with smoke and you have to get out, you can touch the seats and count and remember how close you are to the exit instead of just running around frantically. Number three, supposedly one of the safest positions that you can take if the plane is crashing is to put your head in between your knees and hug your legs. That way you're protecting your head from the seat in front of you, you're protecting your arms from flying around and breaking, and you're protecting your neck from snapping. Number four, if the plane is taking off or if the plane is landing, take out your headphones, don't fall asleep, don't drink. You want to be completely aware of your surroundings in case the plane crashes. Some people have died because they've been too drunk or they were asleep and they missed that 90 second window to get out. Number five, if the plane crashes and you're trying to get out, leave your shit behind. So many people have died because people are wasting that 90 seconds by trying to get their shit. I don't care what's in that bag of yours, it's not that important. And just think, if you did grab your bag and then you exited that plane, somebody probably died because you took the time to grab that. I don't know, doesn't seem worth it. Number six, whenever they tell you to put on that oxygen mask first before you help anybody else, fucking listen to that. The reason they tell you that is because if you don't put on that mask, within 15 seconds, you'll be passed out. So think about it this way, if you put the mask on your baby first, you'll probably be passed out by the time you go to put on your own mask, and now your baby is sitting there, fucked, because you're passed out and the plane crashes and you can't get the baby out. So put on your mask first. Now this last tip is for a very extreme circumstance, and that's if your plane explodes and you are now hurling toward the ground. Supposedly they say do not aim for water, like hitting water from that high up is basically like hitting the ground. They say that the best position to do is to put your arms out and your legs out like you're skydiving and try to land flat. That way as you're falling, your body is kind of going against the wind, so you're going a little slower. If you curl up into a ball, you're just going to hurl toward the ground like a fucking bullet. And then if you do land like this, you will probably probably have every bone broken and just be really fucked up. But that position does give you slightly more of a chance of surviving. So there you guys go. That is some things I learned about plane crashes that really creeped me out, but also made me feel better. Because there is ways to survive. I always thought if I was in a plane and it started to go down, that would be it. But supposedly 95% of people actually survive plane crashes, which is fucking awesome. And also, traveling in a plane is like a bajillion times safer than traveling in a car. Cars crash all the time, every single day, thousands of them. But when you think about it, how many planes really crash? How often do you really hear about some big, epic plane crash? Not that often. So hopefully this video didn't just creep you out. Hopefully it made you feel a little bit better about flying, but also I hope it creeped you out a little bit because, well, I like to creep you out and I like to creep myself out too. All right, you guys, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you want more videos like this. And also make sure to subscribe to my channel right down there because I make new videos every single day. And if you want to see more videos like this where I talk about death or creepy shit, I'll put a link to a playlist right at the top of the description below. All right, you guys, I will see you tomorrow. Fly safe. Bye. All right, here we go. We are going to plug in right now.
What did I fucking say? What did I say? None of it works. Why do I keep falling for your trickery?